I thought to discuss a particular integrated case study question. It is both common to CA final as well as CA inter. This particular case study, it is not from ICI's RTP, mock test, etc. It's just a question which was compiled. I thought through this particular question, we will revise certain portions of our syllabus. Shall we go on to the question? ABC and Co. is a partnership firm appointed as auditors of QX Limited, a company listed on stock exchange. So this particular company is what company? It is a listed company. They are appointed as auditors to conduct the audit of financial year 1819. Okay. Mr. A is the engagement partner on behalf of the firm in the audit of QX Limited. While auditing the QX Limited, Mr. A identifies that QX is facing financial problems and has not paid many of its statutory dues to the concerned authorities on a regular basis, also unable to pay bank loan and creditors on the due date. From this particular paragraph, what all we can infer? As we already said, this particular QX Limited is a listed company. Mr. A is the engagement partner, you know, SA220. SA220 tells you that in case of a listed company, engagement partner should be there, naturally engagement team, as well as the engagement quality reviewer, EQR. It's mandatory for listed entity audits. Okay. So, A is the engagement partner. While auditing the company, A identifies financial problems. You know, lots of financial problems are there. Meaning, can we conclude that it is a material uncertainty on going concern that may cast a significant doubt to the auditor? Material uncertainty? Significant doubt on going concern as per our essay 570. Moreover, they have not paid their statutory dues to the concerned authorities. Statutory dues, you know, for our number exam, CARO 16 is applicable. In CARO 16, statutory dues outstanding is CARO 16 in that which clause clause number seven moreover they have unable to pay the bank loan that is also there in caro which is clause eight bank loan and creditors on the due date all these are which indicators financial indicators no we have three indicators in sa 570 financial, operational, as well as other indicators. All these are examples of financial indicators. Clear? Moving on to the next para. Mr. A conducts the discussion of these matters with the managing director of QX Limited as to how company is planning to address these issues. But there is no sound action plan to mitigate these problems so far as the company is concerned. On examining the disclosures in the FS, financial statements, Mr. A, you know, A is the engagement partner. Don't forget that. A identifies that such material uncertainty relating to going concern. It's not disclosed in the financial statements. Not disclosed. Something which should have been disclosed is not disclosed. Meaning, it's a type of misstatement, no? Non-disclosure. As per SA 450, 
non-disclosure is also a type of misstatement. So auditor will naturally apply essay 705. He will qualify the opinion. When Mr. A requested the management to make proper disclosure, the management of QX Limited refused to make it. So naturally auditor has to modify the opinion. Despite the above situations, QX has granted interest-free advance to one of the directors during the same financial year. Now, loans given. There are two places. One is 143.1, Clause A, Duty to Enquire. If you remember, Company Audit, Duty to Enquire. In that Clause A, whether loans and advances made by the company are prejudicial to the interest of users, whether they have been properly secured, that particular clause. Moreover, directors are related parties, parties specified under Companies Act, related parties. CARO 1 clause is there, CARO clause 3, as well as CARO clause 4. Clear? Now, Mr. A is in the finalization stage of audit. He is going to conclude and express the opinion on financial statements of QX Limited. Mr. A has not done quality control review for the audit of QX Limited. As we have already discussed, as per SA 220, whenever it is a listed entity, there should be a Quality reviewer, engagement quality reviewer, quality reviewer has not been appointed, which is again a contradiction of SA 220. On the basis of above case study, give the answers for the following MCQ. First question. The events or conditions identified by A due to which material uncertainty exists on the entity's ability to continue as going concern are which indicators? Financial, operating, financial as well as operating, other indicators. Which indicators? See, there is not much indication that company is facing operational issues. Every issue is indirectly related to financials, like they say bank loan, statutory dues, etc. So the answer would be A. Have there been a sentence, say, um, there was unavailability of raw material, shortage of key supplies, loss of a KMP? If there was such a sentence like that, then your answer would be C both financial as well as operational indicators. Clear? So, second question. Reporting requirement of CARO 16, which clauses are applicable? Now you have lots of combination here. We'll just strike off which all combinations are not applicable. Then we'll come on to the answer. Clause 3 and Clause 7. Clause 3 is loans and advances made to parties under Section 189. Yeah, that is there. Clause 7 is statutory dues. Yes, statutory dues is also there. No. So, A seems to be okay, but wait. 1 and 3. 1 is fixed assets. There is nothing related to fixed assets as such here. Um, so it's not B. C. 2 and 7. 2 is relating to inventories. Whether, you know, physical verification has been conducted at reasonable intervals. Nothing adverse is there. So it's not just 7, no. It's, they are saying 2 and 7. So it's not C. So we are left out with two options, A and D. 
D says 3. Yes, we have already discussed. 7. Yes, we have discussed. And 8. 8 clause of CARO is repayment of dues to bank, financial institution, debenture holders. Here, they are unable to pay bank loan. So, clause 8 will also come. So, the best option available out of this will be which one? Answer is D. See, CARO 16 clauses are there in CARO 2016. 16 clauses are there. All these clauses should be reported even if it is favorable. Here the question asks you which all clauses are specifically applicable. So specifically applicable clauses are 3 loans, 7 statutory dues, 8 repayment of dues. Third, enquiry under which of the following clause of 1431 of Companies Act 2013 is applicable. You remember we discussed no 1431 clause A whether loans and advances made are prejudicial, whether terms and conditions etc. to be checked, which is clause A. D is whether loans and advances have been shown as deposits. No indication of that. E is personal expenses charged to revenue. No. C clause. All these are clause of 141 sub 143 subsection 1. Okay. C clause is whether investments have been sold at a value lower than the purchase price. So naturally the answer would be A. This also we had discussed here and uh, 143 1 we will report in audit report the 10th element in audit report other legal and regulatory reporting requirements okay we will report only if you have adverse negative or some special comments if you are satisfied with 143.1 as a result of your inquiry, if you are satisfied, you need not report. So here, auditor has to inquire as per clause A. And if it is prejudicial, if it is not properly secured, he may report. Fine. Fourth one. On examining the disclosures in financial statements, Mr. A identifies that such material uncertainty related to going concern is not disclosed in financial statements. When Mr. A requested to the management of QX Limited to make proper disclosures in FS, management of QX Limited refused to make it. What implication shall be there in audit report? This also we had discussed. Non-disclosure is a type of misstatement. So he will modify the opinion. Qualified opinion will be given. So going on to the options. Add a separate para with going concern. See in audit report there is a para as per SA 570. Okay separate para material uncertainty on going concern. This para will be added only if it is properly disclosed and if auditor wants to additionally communicate. Here, they have not disclosed in financial statements. So adding this para is not appropriate. B says qualified opinion seems to be correct because non-disclosure is a type of misstatement which you have to qualify. C says disclaimer. No, 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 no. It's not disclaimer. Why? Because it is not unavailability of evidence. No. So it's not disclaimer. D says EOMP. Emphasis of matter para as per SA 706. No. Why? EOMP 
is added only when he does not have any modification. So answer would be B. As per as says 705, auditor will issue qualified report. 5. Requirement of which of the essay is not complied? Clear case 220. Why? Because the last para of the question, quality, controlled review, even though it is a listed company, EQR, engagement quality reviewer is not appointed. So answer would be essay 220. Listed company, you have to have or it is the responsibility of engagement partner to ascertain and to appoint engagement quality reviewer and discuss with him before finalizing the audit report. So requirement of SA 220 has been violated. Clear? So I know this particular question, I've dealt with various, you know, sections, subsections as well as clauses in detail. My intention was only to revise these clauses. Okay. So, if you have any doubts with respect to auditing, you can WhatsApp me anytime. This is my number. So, meanwhile, stay safe, study well.